Hi, I'm Mike, founder of GoodBed.com. Today we're gonna to be taking a close look at the Level Sleep mattress. Now this is a mattress that has some zoning features that are actually pretty different than anything we've seen before. So it's gonna be fun to show you those as well as to explain how they might be of benefit to you. But one thing that we're not gonna be doing in this review or in any review that we ever do is giving this mattress an overall star rating. Because any real mattress expert knows that mattress fit is highly individual and personal. So in fact, giving a mattress an overall star rating is about the most misleading thing you can do in terms of giving a mattress an expert review. And it's also the best way to know if you see a review with an overall star rating that you're on a website that is simply designed to sell you mattresses. Steer clear. There's a lot of websites out there that look super professional, claim to be unbiased and show up highly in Google that are actually scammers. And in fact, there's a good chance that there's even a mattress company backing that website. What we will do instead is, as we always do, break this mattress down and tell you about who's gonna be a better and worse match for this mattress so that you can figure out whether the Level Sleep mattress is a good fit for you. Stick around. One of the first things most people wanna know about a mattress is just how much softness it has. And in the case of the Level Sleep, this is quite an interesting one because it's gonna vary depending on how you have it oriented. So, if you have it oriented in the generally kind of the primary way, like we're showing here, where you have this uh, lumbar zone in the lumbar position, then we would characterize this as about a medium level of softness. Um, but if you flip it around, which the company does mention that you know, you're free to do if, for example, the lumbar feature is a little bit too much for you, um, then we would say it definitely has a softer feel. We might even call that like a medium soft on our spectrum. So just to the softer side of medium. So overall, we're gonna classify this as a medium because that's the primary orientation that it's uh, meant to have. But uh, we just wanted to let you know that it is gonna vary a little bit depending on which way you have it. So now let's get into what's actually in a level sleep mattress. And as we mentioned right up top, this is a zoning configuration that we haven't actually seen before. The company calls it tri-support, which would seem to suggest three zones, but actually, as you can see here, there are four zones in this mattress. The company calls this zone here at the foot their kind of hidden zone. Uh, but essentially, uh, let's step back a second and give you the big picture, which is that this is a 10 inch mattress in total, uh, and it's essentially got two layers to it. No matter what zone you're in, you're looking at a two layer mattress. You're looking at a three inch comfort layer of Energex foam over a seven inch support layer of polyurethane foam. And I'm gonna start with the support layer because that one's easy. It's the same foam that runs all the way up and down the entire length of the mattress. It's a 1.8 pound density polyurethane foam. And it's, I would say it's pretty firm. Even as uh, foam support layers go, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty firm support layer. Um, then what you have is this Energex foam that has four different kind of versions, depending on what zone, or actually three different versions between the four zones, depending on what zone you're in, because actually the head and the foot are the same. So this Energex foam uh, ranges in density depending on what zone you're in, but it's gonna go up to about 2.2 pounds density. And the, the, the three different configurations really uh, vary up the softness level of that foam. So the head and the foot are gonna be the softest, and they are pretty soft. Uh, as I push my finger into it, I can go right through that pretty easily. Whereas the uh, underneath your hips, which is the heaviest part of your body here, you're gonna get a medium amount of softness, which is designed to provide a little bit more resistance, uh, but also not so much resistance that you can't, uh, that it can't conform to those hips uh, in order to accommodate the curves of your body. So that's why they chose medium here. And the medium foam is for sure noticeably firmer than the soft foam. And then what you have here is a 10 inch zone here that is meant to go underneath your lower back to kind of support that lumbar area. And this is the firmest zone. Uh, and it is definitely pretty firm. Um, so I, let me just to give you an idea, if the entire mattress was made of this foam, we would probably characterize this as uh, a firm mattress um, on our softness spectrum. Whereas if the entire mattress was made of this uh, foam, we might characterize that as a, at least a medium soft, if not softer. Um, so there's pretty distinct differences here. And you particularly notice it if you were to uh, go through 
like right from the soft to the firm here. And you do notice it too when you're lying on it, but we'll talk more about that in our back support and pressure relief section later in the video, which by the way, if you wanna skip directly to that, you can find a link to do that in the description of this video. So uh, overall, that's your zoning here. And I do think it's worth pointing out that the company made an interesting design choice here. They could have very easily provided another firm zone, this 10 inch type of zone right here, which would have allowed you to rotate the mattress in either direction, either orientation, and have the same experience on the mattress, no matter how you have it rotated. Instead, they chose to not do that so that you'd have uh, basically an option of a different feel in those two configurations. So, you know, neither choice is better or worse. I could see either one being justifiable, but I think it's worth pointing out what choice they made in that regard. Um, and then I guess it's worth adding that all of this is wrapped in this cover here, um, which is, I would say in general, pretty typical of a lot of other online covers we've seen. It's got kind of a soft jersey knit feel to it with some stretch, particularly stretch going across the mattress, not so much stretch going the length of the mattress. Um, and uh, a little bit of cushioning to it, a little, a little bit of, of thickness, and, and it certainly feels, you know, nice and sturdy to, to my mind. Um, they did give it a little bit of, a, aesthetically, it has three zones to it as well. So they kind of uh, accentuate the zoning characteristics uh, of the underlying foam uh, in the cover. Although I don't think there's any real difference other than the visuals here between these three sections of cover. So there you have it, the materials and construction on the Level Sleep mattress. So now we're gonna get into the two things that everybody has to get from their mattress, which are back support and pressure relief. But the tricky thing with these two things is that no mattress is gonna be able to provide these things equally well for all people. It's gonna come down to a matter of fit, and it's gonna be dependent on things like your weight, your preferred sleep position, as well as even factors like your body shape. Uh, so I'm gonna take you through each of the three main sleeping positions and talk about which types of sleepers within those positions are gonna be uh, better or worse served by the level sleep mattress. And I'm gonna start on my back because that's actually the position I predominantly sleep in. And just for context, I'm about six feet tall, not quite 200 pounds. And what I can show you here is that I'm very well supported in this position. Um, I always look for things like uh, lumbar support, make sure that my, my lower back area is well supported, making sure my hips can sink in enough, but not too much so that there's any hammocking. Um, so I can confirm that uh, all of the usual checks we would do in this position are being met. Um, but, but further than that, I can confirm that this lumbar thing is a pronounced effect. I noticed it the very first time that I laid on this mattress. Uh, in fact, it was before I even knew that this feature existed. I didn't really know anything about the level sleep mattress, frankly. And I, the first thing I thought was, wow, I'm getting a lot of lumbar action. So it's a real noticeable thing. It's a real thing. Um, I do think that this lumbar feature would be effective across a pretty wide range of weights. People well lighter than me and well heavier than me um, would, would, would experience this the same way I do. Now, that being said, not everyone is gonna want this much lumbar support. I think this is really designed for people who, who want or need even that extra lumbar support. Um, you know, maybe people who tend to use that on a chair at the office or who are likely to kind of put some towel or something underneath your lumbar when you're not lying on a normal mattress in order to give you that extra lumbar support. Um, for those people, I think this is going to have uh, a great effect. It's going to build that type of thing right into the mattress. Um, let's now turn to my stomach. Now, this is the position I spend the least amount of time in, but but I just want to show you, um, I don't think that the lumbar here has any kind of negative effect. It's not like when I lie on the mattress on my stomach, I'm, I'm feeling like it's pressing into me and making it uncomfortable to lie on my stomach. The main thing you want to watch out for on your stomach is that your, your hips don't sink too far into the mattress so that you get like an overarching. And I, I didn't experience any of that. So I, I w I'm not too worried about that for people. Uh, at least people who are my weight, maybe people who are significantly heavier than me, I might worry a little bit about that, um, but, but not really for most people. I think most stomach sleepers would probably be fine. That being said, the bone bar feature isn't really designed uh, for stomach sleepers, so you're sort of not really um, uh, 
benefiting from the key feature of this mattress by using it on your stomach. Um, now let's switch over to my side. And this is the position where you need to think about not only back support, but also pressure relief. Uh, and again, by back support, what I mean is spinal alignment. We've been talking about uh, spinal alignment in those previous two positions. And the key is that you want the mattress to hold your spine in what's called a neutral position. So meaning about the same position that your spine is in when you're standing. And obviously when you're on your back, that's where that curve in the lower portion of your spine comes into play. Um, but when you're on your side, you want it to be just a straight line. Um, so in terms of the spinal alignment when I'm on my side here, um, what I can tell you is that uh, for me, my widest part of my body on my side is my shoulders. So that's what, typically what I'm focused on is uh, I like to see my shoulders be able to get into the mattress a little bit so that uh, the upper part of my spine doesn't have a curve when I'm sleeping on my side. Um, and what I can tell you here is that this soft, this, remember this is a soft section here, and it does the job in terms of letting my shoulders sink into the mattress. So uh, in that respect, I'm, I'm definitely liking uh, the spinal alignment I'm getting. That being said, as I'm lying on my side here, I am very much experiencing this lumbar action. <laughs> and, and it's really, uh, when I'm on my side, it's performing a function that really isn't needed. I don't have a gap to fill here when I'm on my side, like I do when I'm on my back. And so it's almost performing a function that isn't needed or even wanted. Um, I'm feeling kind of pressure here on my rib cage almost, which I worry maybe is, is actually pushing this part of my spine up and creating almost an unnatural bend between this part of my spine and this part of my spine. It's very subtle, but you know, when you're talking about sleeping on a mattress for eight hours a night, you don't really want those tiny muscles in your spine to have to be working in any way um, to try to correct for anything like that. So um, I guess I feel like overall, uh, from the standpoint of a side sleeper, this, this feature here might not be uh, necessarily a good thing. And in fact, I did find it much more comfortable to sleep on my side with the mattress rotated around the other direction without this feature. So I do think that's probably the case for a pretty wide range of side sleepers too. So take that for what it's worth. Now, that being said, as if, you know, that's clearly something that you might, you know, you know reasonable people could, could differ on. You might have a different experience than I did. To the extent that's the case, I should talk about pressure relief because again, this is the position where your body's weight is distributed over the smallest surface area. So you're most likely to experience pressure points on your side relative to any other sleep position. Um, and so what I can tell you is the pressure relief on this mattress I found to be uh, pretty good. I felt like, uh, again, this a lot, there's a lot of softness up here where I typically tend to experience those pressure points is in my shoulders because that's kind of my pointiest part. Um, and I did not experience any kind of pressure points, no kind of numbness or tingling in my shoulder. So I thought that this uh, soft Energex foam up in the shoulder area did a nice job from a pressure relief standpoint. So now we're gonna get into what we call preference-based characteristics. Now these are characteristics of any mattress that cannot be better or worse. They have no universal better or worse. They're simply a matter of what your personal preferences is and everybody's preferences are gonna differ on these. The first of these characteristics is actually softness, which we've already covered. But right now what we're gonna talk about is what we call responsiveness, which is the difference between that slow responding memory feel or more of a quick responding bounce. Let's start with the memory feel because that's easy to eliminate on the level sleep mattress. There's no memory foam in this mattress. And as you can see here, no matter where I go down on this mattress here, there's no delayed responsiveness coming back up. It's all relatively quick responding Energex foam. So uh, no memory feel on this mattress. In terms of bounce, that's a little trickier because we have to think of bounce at different levels of the mattress. Ba mattresses can have surface bounce. Um, right up which we you know, measure like this. And as you can see here, um, this mattress does have a little bit of surface bounce. The Energex foam being quick responding does provide it with a little bit of, a little bit of surface bounce. Um, but they can also have deep bounce, which we'll get to at the end. But let's start uh, before that, let's do what we call mid-level bounce where we test with this 16 pound bowling ball. And we'll just show you at different uh, parts of the mattress. Uh, that was the soft head. That's the uh, firm lumbar area. 
This is the medium middle, um, and this is again the soft foot. And you can see that they all have you know, some amount of bounce. Mostly what you're seeing there is the bowling ball bouncing off that uh, relatively firm foam support core. Um, but so that's a decent amount of mid-level bounce, I would say, because of the firmness of that support core. But now we get to uh, deep bounce, and I'll tell you that there is really no deep bounce at all. Um, so when I put my full 200 pounds on this mattress, depending on where I come down, I pretty much go right to the bottom. Um, so definitely no deep level, no deep bounce to speak of. A little bit of mid-level and surface bounce. So uh, we put this, uh, since there's no memory field, we put this a little over towards the quicker responding side of the spectrum, but not too much. The next preference-based characteristic is what we call cushioning depth, which is the difference between sleeping more in your mattress and getting that hugged or cradled sensation, or sleeping on your mattress and getting more of that floating on top of your mattress type of sensation. Uh, neither of these is better or worse. Like any preference-based characteristic, it's just a matter of what you prefer. And we would characterize the level sleep mattress as probably somewhere right kind of down the middle of that spectrum, what we call average cushioning depth. So it's gonna give you a little bit of kind of an in-between type of sensation. A little bit of that hugged or cradled sensation and a little of that floating, but really not kind of a lot of either. You're just right down the middle. Um, it's worth noting though that depending on how you have this oriented, the amount of cushioning depth sensation you're going to feel is going to change a little bit because uh, when I'm lying on it this way, um, I'm, I've got my back here is on top of this firm section and that's going to give me this sense of a little bit more floating here in this section of my, of my body. Whereas if I were to orient it the other way, my back is underneath uh, this medium section and that's definitely a noticeable difference. I'm feeling more kind of hugged or cradled sensation in this part of my back when I have the mattress oriented differently. So we would still classify it as average cushioning depth, still kind of in the middle of that spectrum, but it is a noticeable difference that we thought it was worth pointing out. So now we're gonna switch gears a bit, and for the rest of the video, we're gonna talk about characteristics that actually can be better or worse. The issue is that they may or may not be important to you. We call these priority-based characteristics. And the first of these is motion isolation, which as you may know, refers to the degree to which the person on, say, that side of the mattress is gonna be aware of or affected by what's happening over on this side of the mattress. And this, of course, would be something that would be super important to you if you're, say, a light sleeper and you've got a restless partner or kids or pets who join you during the night, but may not be important to you if, say, you sleep alone. So, uh, this is a perfect example of a priority-based characteristic. And we test this a few different ways. First, by dropping this 16-pound bowling ball down on the mattress and seeing what happens to that bowling pin, which, as you can see, moves a little bit, uh, mostly due to disturbances in the cover, uh, but does not tip over. Um, and then we're gonna test this secondly by me putting my full 200 pounds down, just kinda hopping into bed rather carelessly. And you can see it even moves less because overall, while I'm coming down with a lot more force, I'm coming down with less velocity than that bowling ball, so there's less disturbance passed through the cover, and, uh, and therefore, you really get uh, almost no movement of the bowling pin at all. So overall, we would say that this mattress certainly has excellent motion isolation. One thing that's important to some people is the ease of repositioning on the mattress, which can be a particular problem on mattresses that have super deep cushioning or a lot of slow responding memory feel in particular. Uh, this is a mattress, however, that has neither of those things. So we just wanted to quickly show you that this is not something that we anticipate is likely to be a problem for you on the level sleep mattress. One important characteristic for some people is edge support. And you may have heard us say before that this does not tend to be a characteristic where all foam mattresses like this one excel. And certainly in the test where I'm sitting on the edge of the mattress, you can see that the level sleep mattress is no exception to that. I'm, sinking quite a bit into the side of this mattress. And this is, by the way, on the medium section. It's even more pronounced if I were to sit at the uh, foot of the bed uh, like this, and you see it's just uh, a, lot of, a lot of compression there on the side. Now, of course, I don't feel unstable, like I'm gonna slide off the bed, but no question, I feel quite a bit of uh, compression on the edge there. Uh, so let's also just show you uh, the other way we test this, which is when I lie on the edge of the bed. And what I would actually say here is that the level sleep mattress does 
better than I might have expected. Uh, certainly above average for all foam mattresses where I can lie right on the edge and actually feel totally stable. Um, so certainly in this respect, we would say um, above average for all foam mattress as and overall actually at least okay, if not good edge support from this standpoint. Um, it's worth noting though, if I switch directions and if I lie this way, where I'm no longer having that firm lumbar support area, then I feel a much more pronounced lean and no longer feel stable lying on the edge. So uh, just bear that in mind that if you do use this mattress in the other orientation, the edge support will not be as good. Um, but overall, I guess we would classify this when you take the combination of the sitting and the lying down tests as okay edge support. One important characteristic for some people is temperature or particularly a concern with the likelihood of overheating during the night. And this can be a particular concern on an all foam mattress like this one. And in general, we would probably say that if you're someone who is prone to overheating, where this is a known issue for you, then there are probably other types of mattresses that just naturally provide more airflow than an all foam mattress would. Um, that being said, this is a very personal uh, type of uh, characteristic in that some people are gonna be much more prone to this than others. I, for example, am not someone who's prone to sleeping hot and have slept on this mattress and did not have any issues with overheating on this mattress. Um, for other people, if you are somewhere sort of in the middle and you're not sure whether you might have this issue, what I can tell you is that while we did talk about how this is a mattress that conforms a little more closely to your body, uh, like memory foam, and that's gonna mean that less of your body's surface area is exposed to the air, which is the most efficient way it can dispel heat. Uh, the difference between this and memory foam principally is in the densities. This is a much less dense type of foam than memory foam tends to be and therefore more air can flow through this foam. So overall, I do think that that might be something that you can take some comfort from if this is a particular concern for you. One important characteristic for some people is the degree of natural materials in a mattress, or maybe more so just the lack of harmful chemicals. And in the case of the Level Sleep mattress, this is not a natural mattress or a mattress that uses natural materials in any way. However, there is something that I think can give you some reassurance on this front, which is that all of the foams used in this mattress are certified to the CertiPure standard, which is a standard that looks for the presence of and off-gassing of various harmful materials and certifies that neither are present beyond some minimally acceptable threshold. So that is, I think, something that you can take some comfort in if this is an area of concern for you. One characteristic that we're finding is becoming increasingly important to more and more people is adjustable base compatibility. And when we think about adjustable base compatibility, we always think about it in three ways. Number one is, is it gonna damage the mattress in any way to use it on an adjustable base? And in the case of the Level Sleep mattress, the answer is definitely no. It's a mattress that is certainly made to bend and flex just as we're showing it doing here. Uh, the second thing we think about is does anything weird happen when you do have it on an adjustable base, particularly when you have both the head and the foot fully elevated as we're showing you here? Uh, some of the things we look for are like a bowing out on the sides. That doesn't tend to happen with all foam mattresses and is not happening at all here. Um, or maybe bunching up of the cover material, particularly if there's like a thicker quilted cover. Um, again, not really happening here. Um, so nothing weird happening when we have this uh, in a fully articulated position. And the third uh, criteria we look at is how well does it conform to the curves of the base? And again, the ultimate test of this is having it in this fully articulated head all the way up, foot all the way up type of position. Uh, one thing you'll notice right off the bat in this regard is that the foot of the mattress is definitely elevated off of the foot of the base. Uh, that is entirely uh, common, particularly with all foam mattresses when they're new. Uh, it's the last part of the mattress that kind of uh, ultimately breaks in and uh, it eventually does get better, but um, this is a common thing right out of the box that it will not conform at the foot of the base like this one. Um, but otherwise you can see that it is conforming pretty well, but the other test of this is when I get off the mattress uh, and we'll see how well it holds its shape. Um, and what you see here is that this mattress kind of still wants to be flat. Uh, we talked about in the materials and construction section that uh, this uh, support 
foam is pretty firm. And so a firm support foam like that really kind of wants to be straight. It'll take a while for it to break in. We do eventually expect that this too will get better, um, but at the same time, it certainly affects our assessment of uh, the ability of this mattress to conform to the curves of the base. So uh, in terms of the net assessment of adjustable base compatibility, it is certainly adjustable base compatible, but it is certainly also not like the most compatible. So we'd say it's probably okay in terms of adjustable base compatibility. All right, so as part of our review of the Level Sleep, we're just gonna give you our first impressions of the unboxing and initial off-gassing. Uh, as you can see here, this is the box. It's pretty typical size and it weighs about 72 pounds. So let's go ahead and open it up. So there we go, that's the Level Sleep mattress unboxed. That took about three and a half minutes. Um, and uh, it looks like it pretty much expanded to its uh, full height here, but we'll of course always give it a few days, at least a day or two, uh, to make sure it's taken on its final feel and form before we uh, start to do our tests on it. But in the meantime, just to give you an initial sense of kind of any off-gassing, I'd say I'm getting a little of that new mattress smell, but, um, you know, in, unless I get my nose right up in it, it's not really uh, anything I'm particularly noticing. Now, I don't tend to be pretty uh, particularly sensitive to that sort of thing, but what I can tell you is that relative to the other mattresses we unbox, I would say maybe typical or even on the lower side. Three things that are gonna be important anytime you're buying a mattress online are delivery, return policy, and warranty. In terms of delivery, Level Sleep offers free delivery nationwide to your doorstep. From there, you're just gonna be on the hook for bringing it into your bedroom and unboxing it like we showed you earlier in the video. In terms of return policy, Level Sleep offers what we consider to be a very generous return policy. It's a 365 night in-home trial. So while they do ask that you give the mattress at least 30 nights in your home to sort of let your body adjust to it, other than that, at any point during that first year of ownership, if you decide you don't like the mattress for any reason, you can return it for a full refund. So this is definitely way out of the outer edges of um, what's available in terms of return policies out there in a good way. Uh, in terms of warranty, uh, Level Sleep offers what's called a forever warranty, um, which basically means that for, it, it does last forever in terms of uh, there's no time duration on this warranty. That being said, it's worth noting that the most important term in any mattress warranty is not how long it lasts. It's what they consider to be an allowable body impression. Uh, so in the case of an all foam mattress like this, I would say that memory foam mattresses are sort of the standard. Uh, and the biggest memory foam brands out there define an allowable body impression as three quarters of an inch. So meaning if it's less than three quarters of an inch, it's considered normal. If it's more, it's considered a valid warranty event. Um, and of course, this is always measured with nobody on the mattress. Um, so they put a string across the mattress with nobody on it and they measure the amount of that dip. So the reality is that foam is, most li is very likely to recover. Um, and so it, it takes a lot for there to be a visible dip of more than three quarters of an inch. Now, Level Sleep's warranty defines an allowable dip as an inch and a half. So if you think about that on a 10 inch mattress, um, that would be basically catastrophic failure for there to be a one and a half or more uh, inch visible dip. Um, so essentially what you have is on the negative side, maybe in this warranty, you're not really protected against any kind of softening or body impressions uh, of any kind because the, anything uh, less than an inch and a half is not covered. That being said, uh, you are covered against some kind of catastrophic failure that could happen to this mattress forever. One thing that's important to just about every mattress shopper is value. And when we think about value, we think about how much does it cost, what's in it, and how long do we think it's going to last. In terms of the cost, the current price of the Level Sleep mattress is $11.99 for the queen size. And that would be before the good bed discount is applied. So we'll include a link to that discount in the description of this video, and you'll definitely want to make sure you uh, take advantage of that. Um, in terms of what you're getting for that, you're getting essentially a 10 inch all foam mattress with uh, two layers 
the top three inches of which we would consider to be maybe a premium comfort material, which is that, that Energex material that we showed you earlier in the video. And more specifically, you're getting the unique zoning characteristics that are inherent in that Energex foam layer. In terms of how long we think this is going to last, uh, this is a bit of a tricky one because we generally turn to foam densities as our best, albeit imperfect, predictor of longevity. Um, what I can say is that the, the base layer of 1.8 pound density is a pretty standard and solid uh, density for a base foam layer. Um, standard amongst at least uh, you know, online mattress competitors. Um, and I think it's designed to hold up pretty well for mo people of most weights, maybe uh, with the exception of folks who are significantly heavier than me, or at least 25, if not 50 pounds heavier than me. Um, the rest, for the rest of us, I think it'll be more than sufficient to hold up well over time. As it relates to this top layer of Energex foam, that's a bit of a trickier one insofar as this is an engineered foam that has a little bit less durability history than some other materials. So it's a little harder to know uh, whether uh, the densities of this foam, call it in the low 2.0, uh, you know, 2.0 2 to 2.2 pound density, whether that's how that will hold up for an engineered foam like this over time. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, in the time that it's been available, we haven't seen a whole lot of issues that have come up to give me a lot of concern, but I just can't speak to with as much confidence as I can other types of mattress materials. Um, in terms of how all of this compares to other online mattress options you may have or other options you may find in your local store, I would say that um, probably if you're just looking at this on a straight up mattress for your money basis, you might say that, at least relative to the other online options, that the value of this is maybe okay at best. Uh, insofar as it's a 10 inch all foam mattress with the materials I described. Um, but I don't necessarily think that that's the appropriate way to think of this because this is a mattress that really does have this one signature feature that is very unique, which is that lumbar support that we've shown you. And so if this is something that you're after, then this is a very unique solution for you. And for sure, I would say that with that in mind, this mattress would at least be a good value. So just to summarize some of the things we've covered in this video, we think that the Level Sleep mattress is a really unique option that is designed to serve a specific purpose for a pretty specific group of people, which is people who want additional support in their lumbar area. And we talked about how we think this mattress can actually serve that purpose quite effectively for a wide range of back sleepers, uh, including people who are significantly lighter than me, as well as people who are significantly heavier than me. Uh, and we also talked about how we really think this mattress works in this regard. It does the thing it's promising to do. You feel that added lumbar support. Um, so it's not just smoke and mirrors. There's something real to that feature. Um, we did talk about how we also think this could work for stomach sleepers, although you're not really benefiting from that lumbar feature when you're sleeping on your stomach. Uh, however, we also mentioned that we do have some concerns about side sleeping on this mattress as it relates to spinal alignment. Uh, so we're not sure that this will be an optimal fit for some side sleepers in that regard. Although if you do choose to sleep on your side on this mattress, we did find the pressure relief to be pretty good. Uh, if you're someone who's looking for a lot of that memory feel, we did talk about how you're not gonna get any of that on this mattress. Uh, you are gonna get some surface bounce, uh, but you're not gonna get a lot of that deep bounce if that's something that uh, but overall, if you're looking for a mattress that has kind of a medium level of softness, one that kind of runs down the middle in terms of a cross between sleeping more in your mattress and being hugged and cradled by it versus sleeping on your mattress and feeling that floating above it sensation. Uh, one that is, uh, has pretty good edge support for an all foam mattress and excellent motion isolation. And maybe most importantly of all, if you're looking for a mattress that does deliver this unique feature of added lumbar support, uh, particularly when you're sleeping on your back. Uh, and if all of the other features and characteristics that we covered in this video sound like a good match for you, then we definitely do think that the Level Sleep mattress is one that you should consider.
So we hope you found this video helpful in determining whether the Level Sleep mattress is the right mattress for you. If you're still not sure, we'd recommend you go to goodbed.com and take advantage of the many other resources we have available to you, including our detailed written review of this mattress, which we'll include a link to in the description of this video, but also our mattress match quiz, which will help you search across brands and stores, both online and offline, to find mattresses that best match your personal needs and preferences. And lastly, I'd just like to close with a bit of a public service message. As we mentioned up at the front of this video, there are a lot of scammer mattress review sites out there these days. We gave you some good tips on how to spot them, the most uh, easy of which is to look for an overall star rating in their review. If you do find yourself on one of those review sites at some point, just be careful not to click any of the links on those websites. Because if you do, you'll be inadvertently perpetuating the type of misleading information that those websites are providing by giving them money. They will make money when you click those links. So if you've been on one of those sites and if you're not sure that whether you might have clicked the link uh, and you want to make sure that they don't make money when you make a purchase, you can come to Goodbed before you buy and make sure that your last click to the retailer's website is from one of our links. That will ensure that the scammers don't get paid. Now, full disclosure, that will of course also make it so that we do get paid. But we view this as your opportunity to vote for the information that you found most useful in making your decision. So if you value trustworthy information from people who are truly real mattress experts and therefore can help you with the personalized information that you need to find the right mattress for you, then we hope you will take the time to actually take that last step and come to goodbed.com right before you buy uh, so that we will ultimately be able to continue providing this type of information to you in the future. Thank you very much. We appreciate you watching and we hope you sleep well.